The Airbus A321 XLR is, as the name suggests, an extra long range variant of the A321 LR, and very generally speaking, a further extension to the existing A321 platform that has proved hugely successful in recent years. So much so that the European plane maker has moved ahead with opening a final assembly line in Toulouse, where the A380 was previously housed. Some would go as far as saying the A321 has, in its own right, emerged as a game changer in our industry offering airlines not just a narrow-body aircraft, but a plane that is capable of operating longer-range routes, which is becoming a very attractive option. Launched in 2019, so not that long ago, the A321 XLR addresses the demand for more efficient and also versatile planes in our space, enabling your airlines to open new routes to maybe, say, secondary cities, which is a substantial distance away from their hub. The perfect way I like to describe it is as follows. Imagine you're flying from the east coast of the United States to London on the A321 LR. Maybe this is with JetBlue, but perhaps think of the A321 XLR as now having the possibility to extend much further west, and now 50 new European cities are within reach. That is what the XLR offers customers just in terms of transatlantic offering. This is only extended when we're looking at more markets globally. Several factors ultimately influenced Airbus's decision to develop such a new variant. Carriers were really looking to bridge the gap between single-aisle and twin-aisle models, but also not compromising on, say, fuel efficiency and extended range. The XLR, with its improved range on the LR, has been made possible thanks to a new fuel tank, and it therefore became a very compelling option for airlines looking to operate these longer ranged flights, but not being limited with, say, other aircraft. The success of the A321 XLR is evident in its strong market reception. During its first week, and arguably you could say it was aided by the time of launch, which was during a major air show, nevertheless the plane accumulated hundreds of orders from high-profile customers without still yet entering the skies. Its capabilities have resulted in, what I would say importantly, not just legacy but also low-cost units and every kind kind of business model being interested in acquiring it and seeing the appeal that was there. One key advantage of the A321 XLR is its efficiency in serving point-to-point -point routes. While wide-body aircraft, yes, traditionally have dominated long-haul operations, and even to a certain extent medium-haul ones for some times, you could also make the case that travellers still prefer this as an option when flying due to the space. The XLR's lower operating costs, though, make it a very competitive option for airlines looking to, say, operate direct flights between secondary cities and, in turn, bypassing major hubs. Or, in some cases, they may look to operate from a secondary city to a major hub that wouldn't have been possible previously. It's all about offering convenience, and some will agree or disagree that this is worth it, factoring in the long journey on a single aisle for better connectivity, but that is where I want to stick with, the element of customers on board the type. Despite its success in terms of orders and interest, the A321 XLR has faced its criticism, primarily from a passenger standpoint, and it centers around the idea that single aisle aircraft for longer range flights don't work and are not something that people enjoy. Some industry experts and passengers argue that the narrower cabin of a single aisle plane may result in a less comfortable experience. Moving back to the XLR and the criticism, it could be visible for the most basic tasks such as trying to perform a mill service, going to the toilet and such. While these are always issues that have been present on narrow body flights, or should I say single aisle journeys, it is definitely highlighted for these now longer range, say transatlantic flights. However, the XLR's efficiency have really outweighed these concerns for many airlines, especially those targeting your maybe more point-to-point -point operations. The reality also is that, yes, this is an aviation channel, and the likelihood of you watching being interested in travel in some form doesn't mean we are the large majority. We're more of a smaller minority, so we do need to consider that too. Apart from critics, Airbus has encountered challenges during the development and certification process. This 
is particularly related to the additional fuel tank. Certification issues arose requiring adjustments and or small modifications to really just ensure that the aircraft is compliant with safety standards. While this has caused some delay, these challenges really just prove how difficult it can be to certify a plane right now. It is ongoing for multiple aircraft programs across multiple aircraft manufacturers. The A321 series though is labeled a game changer and also an aircraft that some may view as a threat to Boeing's long-standing run in the market. Why? While Airbus's continued development of this series does place the American plane maker in a bit of a challenging position. Boeing's decision to largely scrap its proposed middle-of-the-market aircraft, the NMA, dubbed the 797 by some, in favour of reassessing and potentially heading back to the drawing board in the early 2030s, has left a gap that Airbus is being very quick to exploit. The A321 XLR's success has allowed Airbus to dominate the middle of the market segment, attracting customers who would have otherwise probably considered Boeing's offering, or were also waiting for Boeing's offering, but couldn't wait anymore. This is also a segment that it is worth mentioning analysts labelled in the late 2010s as highly lucrative, with the demand for thousands of units. That is now only being proven with the significant amount of orders, and this tally is expected to grow, no doubt with certification aiding the XLR. As Airbus strengthens its position in the sector, Boeing faces the risk of losing market share in a crucial segment that it previously occupied strongly, but the emerging reality that they are probably okay with this as they don't really have any wiggle room is something that needs to also be factored in. The A321 XLR's operational efficiency and flexibility appeal to customers. And yes, at the same time, there have been certification problems and criticisms related to the onboard product, but most label the aircraft as something that will undo a lot of what Boeing has worked hard on. And yes, while well, maybe people will try and pit the 737-10 against the A321neo, for many airlines, these planes offer something entirely different. Different. What are your thoughts on the Airbus A321 series? Yes, you can discuss the XLR or maybe the LR or the base standard variant, and I would love to hear your opinions on its trajectory for the next, say, 10 years, where it will likely be unrivaled for future development and appliance to routes right around the globe, as Boeing doesn't move ahead with an alternative, or should I say, a true replacement for your 757. You can let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. Please do take care and do also be safe and I will indeed see you next time for more coverage on our industry right here on Globetrotting. And we'll fly.